Y'all, I never can sit down and just record a video in one take and I just did it this morning and so I'm just kind of like, whoa, the coffee worked. <laughs> so um, yeah, I wanted to get on here and I want to tell you a bit more about my story and just who I am, what my musical journey has been like, and clearly I like coffee, a nice medium blend or roast or whatever you call it. Um, fair trades always great, whole beans so I can grind it up fresh in the morning. But we're not on here to talk about my coffee preferences. I want to tell you a bit about who I am as a musician. So I started playing the violin at age five. I was trained in the Suzuki method for about 10 years and then we moved from Charlotte, North Carolina to Marietta, Georgia. And right around then my private lessons kind of fell off and I wasn't taking a whole lot. I was still involved in the school orchestra, so I was still getting that classical training there. And you might be wondering, okay, yeah, you're getting all this classical training, Hannah, where does the fiddle come in? Well, um, when I was eight years old and still in my first Suzuki uh, private lesson setting, I got really burned out and I did not want to keep playing the instrument. I was so frustrated, wasn't enjoying it, and my teacher had the great idea to introduce me to a different style of music fiddle. And that was a whole mix of, I would say, bluegrass, there was some Appalachian old time, a lot of Irish music, some Scottish as well. And all of that was just tied in together to give me a new repertoire that I could enjoy. And instantly fiddling came more easily to me. I enjoyed it a lot more and I could play it with my dad because he's a guitarist, um, does more folk and whatnot. Um, he's more in that genre. So it was great that we could play music together and that also helped keep my momentum up for playing music. So fast forward again to moving to Marietta, Georgia. Um, I joined the high school orchestra. I came in as a sophomore, so I didn't have the freshman year to make new friends in high school. And me being the shy, introverted girl I am, or at least was at the time, it takes me a while to get adjusted to new places. So the orchestra was really great to have this community for um, just getting involved and having a similar interest with people so that I could connect with them. And I really loved being in the Walton High School Orchestra. It was great, um, but it was also a roller coaster because I started off in the top level orchestra. And then when I auditioned for the next year, I got bumped down to the second one and I was crushed. Like I was just didn't want to deal with all this. And um, I, I was very discouraged for a while, but then I had a good talk with my dad um, and I distinctly remember just being in tears walking around our neighborhood and at our rental house and then suddenly he was like, you know, you can work your way back up to the top level and you can put in the work and you can do the effort and you can get to where you want to go. And both he and my mom have always been super supportive and encouraging and giving this type of advice to me. Um, so I really appreciate them for that and that's what happened. I put in the work, I practiced a lot, and I improved my classical playing to the point where I skipped back up to the new top level orchestra, so that was two levels up. And that was amazing and that was really an experience that implanted this determination and grit into me, which I think is crucial to being a musician and surviving as a full-time musician these days. So I'm really appreciative of those experiences there. Now, I went to college at Furman University in Greenville, South Carolina, and I entered in as intending to be a music performance major. And this is all, the only option there is to be music performance classical um, at this, at Furman. So, um, there's jazz too, but I wasn't into jazz as much. I do like jazz, but not to play. <laughs> So I'm getting so sidetracked here. See, this is like, this is coffee. This is, this is real time. I'm just blabbing at the camera, telling you my story. This is how I operate. Um, like this is how I annoy Chris, who's my fiance and my family when I'm talking to them. I just babble on and on. But anyway, back to Furman. So I took private lessons and a about, I'd say it was halfway through my sophomore year is when your private teacher lets you know whether or not they think you should pr pursue the music performance major or the um, just the regular BA in music. And I was told that I probably would not be successful as a 
professional class, classical musician. But this time it didn't crush me. This time it was a mutual agreement between me and my teacher because we both saw that my heart wasn't in the classical music like it was in the fiddle music. And I'm so appreciative to my um, professor because he said, you can still play, you can still perform, you can still do fiddle music, and you don't have to be a classical musician. Like, use your education to build up your music skills. Um, and I ended up adding on the anthropology major so that I had more of a cultural look to my music, which was awesome, and we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but it really was, it was a mutual agreement that we should, that, that I should pursue fiddle music, but I should cut back on the BM and go to a BA degree instead. So around that time, most of my BA credentials were already filled in because they like to front load because they're smart people the way that they design this. And so I had a lot of room to take other classes and I actually was able to add on that anthropology major, which was another thing that you could pretty much finish in two years. So I combined the two of them. And when you combine music and anthropology together, you get ethnomusicology. And a lot of people haven't heard this term, and it's essentially, it's world music, which could be any music anywhere in the world, really. Um, but you're studying the culture, you're studying how it affects the music. Um, it's a lot of history, it's a lot of science, like social science, and understanding how humans work, um, which I always find fascinating, and I love that. So that is pretty much how I got on the ethnomusicology route. Now, about, uh, let's see, junior year, I started going to the Swannanoa Gathering in Asheville, and I love that uh, Celtic Week fiddle camp vibe. It was amazing. I connected with so many wonderful people and learned about a whole lot of opportunities in the world that I had never considered before. So the following summer, between my junior and senior year, I actually did four different camps. So I went to Ireland, I went back to Swannanoa, I went to Glasgow, and then I went to Cape Breton uh, up in Nova Scotia for four different fiddle camps. And that really kickstarted something. That was like, I loved traveling, I loved to connect with other people about my music, and it was just absolutely amazing. Um, so I, I, I mean, that really kickstarted something for me. And that's where I found out at Swannanoa about University College of Cork and how they do master's programs over there. I mean, obviously they're a university and they're in Europe. Um, so they have at least a BA degree, if not, if not more than that. So I went to Cork and I got my master's in ethnomusicology. It was a one year program um, and it was uh, very jam-packed um, and it's literally like a year it's not just eight months so I was only over in Cork for eight months but then I spent the following like two to three months uh, working on my thesis I turned that in August of 2017 and then I went back in February 2018 to graduate so I've had a wonderful experience in Cork. Um, I found a lot of great people in the sessions there and really that just kind of escalated my love for the music is the more that I get into it the more I love it and the more I want to learn more about it and that's really what set me on my path here um, now the whole Michigan connection is totally different so I actually um, worked at a Celtic shop in downtown Petoskey which is in northern Michigan um, the summer between senior year and going to Ireland for my master's I just worked as a um, retail sales associate. And then March of the next year, I got an email from my boss saying, hey, uh, our manager's leaving this uh, to go back to school. Are you interested in coming back and training up to be the manager for the shop? And at this point, I'm in Ireland. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing when I come back to the States. So sure, this, is, this sounds like something to pursue. So I did, and that is how I got up to Michigan. Um, I learned so much being a retail manager. Um, as I, I learned what I like and what I don't like <laughs> in, um, in work, and I got a lot of experience with communicating with people and with understanding the business side of things, and I'm really, really appreciative of that experience. Now I'm not in the store anymore. We closed it down um, earlier this year in the summer, and so, 
I'm just doing full-time music now. I am teaching, I help with a local strings program, and I also um, teach private lessons on my own. I do gigs wherever I can get them, usually between Sheboygan, which is where I'm based now, and Traverse City, which is about two hours south of here. So those are my, that's kind of my range at the moment. And I would love to spread further afield, so that's where this album comes in. And that's why I want to have this physical representation of my music that I can send out to people because, you know, I can send tracks to radio shows, I can do press releases, I can apply to play at festivals because they usually require that you have some form of um, musical proof. And it's less and less these days an actual physical CD and more of like, you know, a digital copy or um, a video of you performing. So that's another thing um, that I'm, I'm working on getting more of. But yeah, it's it's really cool. It's um, this is what I do now. I'm I'm not necessarily a freelance musician. Um, I, I haven't really come up with a title for myself really. But this is a this is a solo business right now. I'm looking to grow it. I'm looking to improve my skills in marketing, in e-commerce, in um, in person commerce. I don't know what the word is for that, but that's what I'm doing now. And I'm so excited. Uh, this album is the next tangible step to realizing my big music goals. And it's a mile marker to show how far I've come these days, um, like what all of what I've just told you about, how that shaped me into a musician. And then it's a way for me to look back and be like, oh wow, I've learned a lot since, since releasing this album. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. I've been recording probably one or two days a week with John, who's my guitarist and also my recording uh, engineer and my mixer. So he's like awesome because he knows all the things. And I've been learning a lot from him too about how to produce an album and I'm really excited to share this for you guys. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this little ramble of my history here. I really just kind of, you know, went went with it and just started talking. Um, I was gonna do a live where I did this, but for some reason I get more nervous doing live videos than I do um, just sitting in front of a camera because I can almost delete this if I want to, but I won't because I just spent, what, 12, 13 minutes talking and I don't think I can do this again unless I have another cup of coffee. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Please consider contributing to my Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign. Um, at the time of recording this, we're at 10% uh, um, funded, which is amazing. I'm so thrilled. I am eternally grateful to everybody who's contributed so far. And um, I can't wait to share more with you guys. So yeah, uh, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out on Messenger or whatever social platform we're connected on. And I'd be happy to answer questions for you and connect with you there. So thanks for watching, guys.